Silver and its alloys are extremely susceptible to problems from absorbed oxygen during melting and casting. Silver can absorb up to 20% by volume of oxygen while it is molten and will release that oxygen as it cools, resulting in severe gas porosity in the cast metal. Copper, which is a component of most silver alloys, will not release the oxygen as it cools because the copper oxides are stable, but those oxides will result in less ductile castings with reddish-purple discoloration, known as fire stain, from the red copper oxide in the cast metal. The best way to prevent these problems is to use a large, bushy, slightly reducing flame that covers the metal at all times. The flame will prevent free oxygen in the air from getting to the molten metal. This requires a torch with a large enough single orifice or a multi orifice tip to provide a flame of the appropriate size. Using open top crucibles makes it very difficult to keep the metal constantly bathed in the flame. Using a one piece or two piece hooded crucible will greatly aid in keeping the metal constantly covered by the flame. It is easy to make a two-piece hooded crucible by taking a second crucible and cutting it with a diamond saw to make a matching cover for the crucible. A couple of grooves cut in the lid and the crucible will allow you to use stainless steel wire to bind the top onto the crucible to aid in keeping it in place while melting and pouring. Putting metal in a cold crucible and then trying to heat it up to melting point greatly extends the amount of time that the metal is exposed to oxygen and is counterproductive. So one of the first things you want to do is preheat the crucible before adding the metal to the crucible. Go ahead and take your time while doing this. It is very important to make sure that the crucible is nice and hot before you add the, the metal to it to melt. Okay, we're just about there. The crucible is just about hot enough, so we're going to go ahead and add the metal. Now put the flame back onto the crucible and the metal, and do not remove the flame from the mouth of the crucible until the metal is cast. This will prevent the oxygen from getting to the molten metal. As the metal reaches the molten state, you can use a graphite rod to stir the metal to ensure that all the metal is molten and to remove any dross or foreign material that might have gotten into the melt that's floating on top of the molten metal. This is a good thing to do right before you pour. Once you're sure the metal is completely molten, set down your graphite rod, grab a pinch of flux, throw the flux into the crucible mouth, and go ahead and pour the metal into your ingot mold or mold cavity.
keeping the flame on the metal at all times. And that's it. It's pretty simple. So in this case, after the metal is cooled enough, go ahead and take the mold out of the mold frame and uh, wearing gloves because it's still kind of warm. Open it up and there's a nice cast silver ring blank ready to be cut off and turned into another piece of jewelry. And you will find that if you follow these instructions you will get really nice clean castings. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>